everyone, welcome back to Ellie Ness Crafts channel. I am Lorraine and I will be sharing with you um, what I've been up to with my knitting, um, crocheting, um, I do tend to throw in some cross stitching sometimes and I have been known to do a bit of sewing. This time round, at this episode, I have a lot of knitting, um, a little bit of crocheting and um, a tiny bit of cross stitching. Um, I have quite a few finished objects, so I'm going to rush through those. I have a few whips, and I also want to share with you some yarn that I have incoming. And um, I have to also um, pick the winners for the Ready, Set, Go make-along. So that's what I have in store for you. Hopefully I can get it all done. Um, I do have a very short battery life, so I may have to switch batteries and come back at some point, so do bear with me. Um, but yeah, let's get straight into it with my finished objects. The first one is the one that I'm wearing. This is the Weekender sweater or jumper by Andrea Mowry. This is the pattern. And it is very popular on um, Ravelry and Instagram right now. Lots of people I've seen have been making this. Particularly, I've been watching the Cozy Up Knits um, podcast and they have all done um, a weekend up jumper and ha that has kind of encouraged me to get on and do mine. Um, I have used a an Aran weight yarn. I think, is it meant to be? Yeah, it's meant to be Worcester's weight, which in UK is Aran weight. And I picked up my yarn from B&M stores. I don't think I've got a copy of the yarn here, but if you're interested in seeing all the materials I use, then check out my project page. Um, I forgot to mention that all of the information as to where you can find me will be in the description box below, so do check that out. And anything that I mention here will be shown in the show notes, um, and you can find the show notes below the video, and also the show notes will link you to the project pages for everything that I am currently working on, other than... Um, the cross stitch items so yeah so that's it the Andrea Renee um, weekender sweater move my hair out of the way looks like this very flattering neckline I have posted a picture on my Instagram of me wearing this that my son took and I got so many positive comments on the the, the sweat the jumper itself and I was really pleased with that it was really nice to see so many positive vibes coming from people so thank you for all of those comments um, I wasn't overly keen on the neckline when I'd finished the sweater and so um, once I tried it on and people started commenting I thought oh yeah actually yeah maybe it is quite flattering because it kind of makes your neckline look um, I don't know it just it just does something because of the shape it actually does something to make me feel a little bit um, slimmer I don't know if that's the right word it just made me feel good wearing it basically um, where I wasn't quite sure about the neckline before. I actually felt really, you know, once I saw the photos, I thought, actually, it does look quite nice. Um, it's a simple jumper. It's meant to be boxy in style. Um, show you. So it's meant to be quite roomy. It's like that. It's a split hem, long at the back, low at the front. Very simple, um, but it's meant to be kind of boxy. I went, instead of doing what my size would have been, which was a 36 inch, I went down, I think, and I did the 34 inch, um, because it's designed to be worn with about 10 inches of positive ease. Now, I didn't want my jumper to be that much bigger. I wanted it to be just, you know, a little bit roomy, but not like massive. So I didn't do the 10 inches. I actually went down a size rather than up because the sizes, she didn't actually have a 36. She had 34 and then 38. And I thought rather than go up to a 38, I'm going to go down to a 34 because I've still got 10 inches of ease um, when you add that on. And that should be sufficient. So, yeah. So that's what I did. Um, very simple. Um, it was, There was a tubular cast on, which I'd done before for the, um, the cuffs and the hem. I'd done that before. So I had some idea of how to do that. And um, what else did I learn? Then there was the three needle bind off for the shoulders, which was easy, very easy to do. But I don't think there was anything difficult about this pattern at all, really. Um, and I enjoyed knitting it and it was a, a very quick knit for me. 
so yeah I'm really pleased with it this is the first time I'm wearing it because I wanted to wear it for this video um, so you guys could see what it looked like um, I also finished the Greystone cardigan I showed this in the last po last video I showed myself with the Greystone cardigan um, it was a bit long it had stretched out a lot and I made some adjustments to it so I'm not going to go into detail about that because it's just going to make the video too long but I did do the adjustments and make the Greystone cardigan fit better and I will insert a picture up here so you can see what it looks like um, if I can get one and also I made the adjustments to the long line cardigan which was a Hohi Locatelli um, pattern that also was too long in the sleeves so I shortened the sleeves and because um, they ended up being a bit too long with the, the yarn I was using so I shortened the sleeves and that also is now fine and I wear that quite a lot so you might even see that um, in the next few podcasts because I do wear that cardigan quite a lot but if I can I'll insert a picture up here again as well um, moving on I had done a test knit I did my first test knit which I am holding in my pearl and plum bag which I won in a giveaway from the pen hook and needles podcast last year and um, this pattern is by the lonely knitter Laura of the lonely knitter um, had asked for test knitters for her champion socks this is what it looks like I don't think I'm not sure if the pattern's available yet but that is what it looks like and um, I have been working on these and it's fine to show them on the podcast and I really like them let me get the sock paper Ooh, so I can share that properly I need to remember to be a bit more organised in my videos, um, but I don't know, it's, it, it's a tough one when you've got lots of things to show and you're a bit scatterbrained like me, being organised takes a lot of effort. <laughs> um, so here, here we are, this is what the socks look like, these are the Champion Socks by The Lonely Knitter. The yarn I've used is Pixie Yarn, which is now in it's um, in the colourway Ellie. It's called Ellie now. It used to be called Yule something or other, um, but now it's called Ellie. She renamed the skein, um, the colourway, after I had um, some input in terms of um, her getting recommendations, um, getting orders. That's the word. She was getting lots of orders for the colourway off the back of my order for the one skein. Um, of that colour instead of what it was currently being sold with at that time. I'm making a pig's ear of trying to explain this. She renamed the colourway. It was originally called Yule. She renamed it to Ellie because I had um, ordered a skein of the yarn, which was actually, it, the colourway was actually sold as a mini skein and not as the main skein in the part of a sock set, I think. And she had lots of orders off the back of my one for um, the this colourway as a normal 100 gram skein of yarn. And so she renamed it Ellie after me because I had um, kind of started a trend. So yeah, <laughs> that's, the, that's the long story short version. Anyway, so these are the champion socks. Um, the designer is the Lonely Knitter. Um, she has her own podcast, so go over and check her out. I'll leave the details in the description box so you can find her. Um, and these are the socks that I test knit for her. Um, I don't want really to give too much information on these. Um, I do have information on my project page on Ravelry if you're interested. Um, but the pattern, I don't think it's published yet. So it's not yet available to purchase, but it will be soon. Um, these are sock, top-down socks with a German short row heel, I think. Um, yeah short row heel so there you go so I can't wait to wear these so that's my next finished object I have also this one is a crochet project I'm ever so proud of this one and um, sorry. I haven't done any crochet for a long time and I was inspired after watching um, I think I watched an Instagram video by Old Soul Crochet and she was showing off this pattern and I thought oh that looks really cute and we've got some 
small babies in my family at the moment and um, one which is due and I thought oh maybe I could make one of these um, for the new baby or for one of the current <laughs> one of the babies that are already here and um, yeah I just wanted to give it a go so this is called the Amigurumi baby elephant and I really love the pattern by Old Soul Crochet and um, I actually won a giveaway where she gave away I think six six of her patterns six of her animal patterns and this is just one that I've done and I will be at some point working on the some of the others so anyway I gave it a go it's not perfect I bought myself some yarn Bernat blanket yarn to do this and some um, felt fabric and this is what I have come up with. I think I posted a picture on my Instagram. So it's not perfect, but I'm really, really pleased with it. It's my first attempt at a bigger kind of amigurumi toy and one with a fabric as well as um, the yarn element. So yeah, and it's a little bit more intricate than, than stuff that I've done before. This is what it looks like. So you've done, I've done the trunk, the, the ears, the nose, the arms, the legs and the tail are separate and then just these, just the head and the body bit are, are all in one. So I have real issues trying to line things up properly so the arms are in the same place, so the feet are in the same place, that kind of thing. And as you can probably tell from the, the ears, one looks slightly different to the other one but you know, I'm guessing that's what makes him <laughs> unique, that's my that's my story and I'm sticking to it. I tried my hardest to get the eyes in the same place. The, the, the trunk's a little bit wonky, but I don't know. I, I just think he's cute. I like him anyway. And um, I think that whoever gets this is going to like him too. He's really squishy. And because he's made out of burnout blanket yarn, I've stuck my little label on there. He's very, uh, he's very soft to the touch. And hopefully some lucky little baby or child is going to love having this. Um, my daughter loves it and wants to keep it herself, but I'm I'm kind of hanging on to it as a kind of a prototype until I do my next one. I have some yarn that I bought to do um, a pink one. Whether or not I do the pink elephant or do another animal in pink, I might just try doing something else, you know. Um, but yeah, I'm really chuffed with this. It's basically made using double trebles, I think. Not double trebles, trebles, UK trebles, um, US double trebles. Um, yeah, so, or is it single? Hang on a second. It's a combination of single crochets, it's a combination of US single crochet, um, um, UK double crochets, and, did I do any single? Yeah, and some, um, I don't think there's trebles in there. Yeah, it's just doubles. US single crochet and UK double crochets basically more or less that's how it's done and that's what it looks like I'm pleased with this I'm going to move on because I just I'm just rambling now um, but yeah I want to do another one of these because I really do like how it turned out and I'm confident that I could have a go at another one and um, that would turn out okay as well and it was quick I managed to do this I think I'd say if I if I sat down and did it all in one day if I sat down and had um, like a whole week to do this, I could have finished these in maybe three days. One, one, one of these I could have finished in three days because it was that quick to work on. Um, next up, I have a cardigan that I knit, which is Granny's favourite cardigan by Tiki Georgie Hallam. That's the cardigan here. I think I was working on this last time. Um, when I shared that with you and I have now finished it and I'm really pleased with it this is what it looks like and you can see it's a lace top it's worked from the top down um, you only have lace at the top of the cardigan and then at the sleeve some people on their Ravelry page have not put the lace on the sleeve but I thought it was cute I like it it's a little bit floppy because I blocked it um, the it's stocking stitch downwards and then garter stitch at the bottom there very nice cardigan cardigan very pretty this is supposed to fit a six month old so we shall see um buttons i bought from my local market and 
so they're quite cute they're kind of like a see-through-ish type button and the only problem I had with this was the button band um, on the pattern it says it gives you instructions so that your button band looks like this which I thought oh that's really nice very neat and very precise looking and it's like a chain and then it looks neat on the front but then on the left side the instructions don't do that um, so I kind of had to do it myself I made my own mind up to continue doing that on this side so that it matched that side and yeah okay it doesn't go from the beginning because I only kind of realized after a while that um, the two are not symmetrical now I know if I do this again that I should just do what I did with this cardigan um, on each side I've got instructions more detailed information in the project page on Ravelry as to exactly what I did so if you're interested then check that out but it is a paid for pattern so I can't share too much information but just know that if you do purchase the pattern one button band um, according to the pattern does not match the other one so you have to make it match yourself basically if you want them to be kind of symmetrical um, so yeah so that's what it looks like and it, it the pattern's quite good because it has different lengths for the body you could have it in the dress length you could have it in a kind of a bolero style length and then it also has different sleeve lengths as well so you can uh, modify the pattern to what you want it for for the purpose that you want it for and this was being held in my winter wonderland bag which i got from the lovely lisa saxton who runs the woolly ferret podcast and that's her bag so that's that so that i can actually gift that now that i've shown it here um to the recipient what else do i have off the needles oh my memory blanket so um my memory blanket I've been working on for a very long time. The pattern is by, let's get this out. I've been working on this since last year sometime. I decided I wanted to use up some scraps of double knit yarn. And um, I wanted it to be solid double knit yarn. I do have a couple of squares where there are two different colours of yarn mixed together. But generally I have... Um, used a solid yarn solid color yarn for the blanket um, this is the pattern memory blanket by Georgie Nicholson and very very simple pattern this is available on Ravelry and it's a free pattern and here's the blanket I got to a point where I thought oh, I've had enough I have absolutely had enough of doing this I want to do something different so let's finish this up and move it out so I finished off Where's the bottom? That's the bottom here. This is where I started in this corner. And you can see I've gone across. It's very big. So I'll try and insert a picture. Um, it's not quite like single bed size, but it's blanket size. Um, I decided to put a border around it and I had a look at the colours and thought, right, which one comes up more often? And I went for the burgundy colour, which is a Stylecraft yarn. This is this one here. And I just did a garter stitch border all the way around. And um, yeah, it's difficult to show it like this, but I'll insert a picture up here so you can see what it looks like, the full blanket. So now I've just got to figure out what to do with it, who to give it to, and unless I decide to keep it for myself. So that is another blanket done. Pleased about that. Um, the last finished object I have to show with show you is my um, I'll be there for you shawl. I started this shawl, which is a pattern by Marlisha um, from the Pen Hooker Needles podcast. This is Lady Fernico Creations um, shawl. Here it is. I'll be there for you shawl, and uh, I have managed to finish mine up. So I used this yarn which is an Aran weight yarn trim it's by B&M and you can see here that's how much it cost I it was a great big um, 300 gram skein of yarn and I used about 150 grams just to finish this scarf shawl even I haven't actually woven in the ends but 
I finished it off. It's very big. That's how big it is. Uh, let's see. If I put it around my neck, you should be able to see. It's, it's all garter stitch. Very easy. Easy decreases. And that's what it looks like. It's quite long. So I decided to stop because I got I got it to a length. I think the pattern said to work until you've used up like 75% of your yarn or something like that. And I thought if I did that, then it would just be mahusive. So um, I just thought this is a good enough length to stop. So let me just get on my knees and show you how big it actually is. So there we are. That's my belly button. So it's all the way down there. And that's... That is how big it is so uh, yeah pleased with it it worked out the way I thought it would this is gonna be a gift for somebody because um, I really have a shawl and pink is not really my kind of oh my phone just did something weird <laughs> pink is not really my color so um, yeah this is gonna be gifted to somebody not sure who yet but it will be gifted and gosh, I'm feeling really hot with this on. But yeah, that's what it looks like. It kind of curves. So it's like a, it's kind of like a triangular shawl, but it's quite deep. You can see that like that. If I can take a picture of it, it um, it's full length, then I will. See, that's what it looks like. So that's the finished object. It, like I said, the ends do need to be woven in, but I haven't quite done it yet. So yeah, that is that one. And that's another thing off my needles. So those are all my finished objects. Um, yeah, I'm pleased. I feel kind of <sighs> to have finished quite a few things. Um, I, there are things that I have wanted to start, so I have now been able to start them. I'm planning on doing some, working on some summer tops for myself. So finishing all this lot up has given me the opportunity to do that. So um, yeah, so those are my finished objects objects let me show you what I am now working on okay so because I finished a pair of socks I decided to have a go at um, another pair of socks just to have something um, a mindless kind of knit on the needles however it's not quite as mindless as I perhaps should have made it um, basically I'm trying to use up some leftover yarn this is the midnight colorway from Willy Mummy Yarns that I have left over. I have two balls like this kind of size and I decided to do some toe up socks. Um, and that's the start in this colorway and it's looking good so far. I mean, I'm just gonna make them vanilla socks so nothing spectacular, but I do want to make them a heel flap and gusset type toe up and I have a pattern um, by the or a recipe by the sock matician um, which are called the sock matician's toe up socks um, recipe and I'm gonna go back to that I've done it once before I'm gonna go back to that pattern and try and remember how I did the heel um, so I can use it for these socks so I can use up all of the yarn so we'll see how I get on with that but I've only just started these I've cast on the other foot because I like to work my socks concurrently um, so once I get to a certain point on this, I will usually go on to my second sock, cast on, work up to the same point that I've got to on this, do the heel on this, then do the heel on the second one, and so on. So, um, I've, this is going to be a 64 in 64 stitch sock, because that's just generally what I like to use for my feet, and these are going to hopefully be for me, if I can get them long enough. I may do a contrast heel and cuff but I'm not quite sure I would like to just do a plain just a solid blue um, like this just so I can finish up the yarn all together and maybe they could just end up being shorty socks but I don't know um, we shall see but that's where I am with that I've done this much on this sock and the other foot I've literally only cast on so I haven't got a lot really to show on that one the other thing I have cast on is the place in the sun top, I wanted to make some summer tops, like I said, so I started, I cast this on last time, I got this from um, a magazine, 
Simply Knitting magazine, this pattern. Here we go. Place in the sun, that's the pattern. And who's the designer? Sarah Hatton. This is actually, I think it's available on Ravelry. I know it's listed on Ravelry because um, I've started a project page for it and I found it on there. So this is the pattern I'm going to be working to. Um, last time I only had the, the rib for the bottom done. And this is meant to be done as um, a flat project. So not in the round, but I have, I'm trying to adapt the pattern so I can work it in the round because it will just work up quicker. Um, the yarn I'm using is King Cole Bamboo Cotton 4-ply yarn and this is the colour Wisteria. Um, so I have a couple of balls of this. I did do the math to figure out if I'd have enough because this is yarn that's left over from another project. And I've been working on this quite a bit um, and here is where I've got to. It doesn't look like I've worked on it for very long but I've spent a good few evenings just doing working just on this and this is how much I've done so I've got maybe about a good four five inches here um, and it's I'm doing shaping for the bottom and eventually at some point it will just become a straight knit until I get to the bust area but yeah that's how much I've done on that so I'm quite pleased with the progress on this it's one of those stocking stitch um, knits it's going to take a long time because it's four ply so I'm kind of just pacing myself. I've done a good session on that and I'm happy with the amount I've done. When I get bored of that, I switch to something else. And that something else has been um, this pattern, which is the Mermaid Top by Rebecca McKenzie, otherwise known as Raging Pearl Winds, I think. That's the top there. And I love the look of this. So I bought my yarn, which is Cascade 220 yarn, which looks like this. Cascade 220 Superwash yarn, and the colour is, I think it's aquamarine, something like that. 1960 is the colourway, and that is it there. As I said before, information will be on the project page on Ravelry, so check that out if you want more detailed information. So that's the yarn I'm using. And again, I have been working on this somewhat. I've done some shaping, and it looks small, um, but I have tried it on with a lot of difficulty. I have tried it on. It is a bit of a snug fit at the moment, but I'm. I think... Once it's blocked, if I block it, it will stretch out somewhat and it'll be a more comfortable fit. But it is, it does fit at the moment. It's just a bit more of a snug fit. Um, but this is where I'm at with this. I'm quite happy with it. The way it's knitting up is just so pretty. Look at that. The stitches just all look even. I really love the way it looks. I'm loving the way it feels when I'm knitting. It's so super soft. And... The bottom is actually a garter stitch band, but it keeps turning over because it needs blocking, really. But that's what it looks like back and front. And this one, this pattern is designed to be worked in the round, so I don't really have to think about it. I can just follow the pattern exactly. Um, but yeah. And I've been using all these stitch markers here to mark the shaping. Um, can't remember where I got these from. Various places um, on Etsy, though. These All these stitch markers should be available on Etsy. But yeah, that is where I've got to with my mermaid top. I love the colour, love the feel of the yarn, enjoy knitting this. This is using, it's a double knit weight yarn, so I'm using size 4mm needles, which I think is a UK, US size 6, I think. So that's that one. Um, what else do I have? Let me just check. The last thing I have that I've recently started, which I'm absolutely loving, is this um, cotton top. So, like I said, summer tops are on my brain at the moment. That's what I want to be working on, making some tops that I can wear um, during the warmer months. And I've had this pattern in my stash for a very long time. When I first started taking up my knitting again, which was maybe last year, year before, I actually bought this pattern in a shop, which is a Serdar pattern, um, and it's a crochet pattern. Um, 
so this was at the time when I thought maybe I will learn to crochet and I thought this is a really nice top I'm gonna buy that pattern and one day I'll be able to crochet it and that's what it looks like it's cotton it's made with DK weight cotton and um, it's a Serdar pattern and just the other day I thought right I'm gonna prepare myself to crochet this pattern this top I was a bit nervous about it because crocheting is um, I'm a beginner to crocheting at the moment I'm still learning I feel that there is a lot for me to learn um, and I've just kind of literally jumped in and decided right I'm gonna buy the yarn that I want to make that top I'm gonna to give it a good go and see how I get on um, and I ordered some yarn on the wool warehouse website uh, I'm using Drops Muscat yarn, this here, and this is in the colourway white, I believe it's white, yeah, um, colour 18 white, um, because I wanted a white top, so I, th I kind of figured there's no point in getting a colour that I'm not likely to wear, I'm just going to get white, and white is something that I would wear in the summer months, maybe over a, another top, um, over some swimwear, when I go on holiday, that's the plan and um, yeah so I'm gonna get white I know it's not a practical color but you know what that's what I know I would wear so I've bought the the yarn I bought enough to do that top and I've made a start on it I also bought myself a new crochet hook which is an Addy crochet hook um, I'm using a four millimeter and I'm absolutely loving working on this it's just I'm surprised at how much I'm enjoying working on it so um, this is where I've got to I think yeah that's the top so that's what it looks like at the moment and I'm really pleased I keep looking at it and, and thinking to myself oh my gosh I've actually managed to crochet this and it is actually looking like the pattern so I'm seeing it kind of form in front of my eyes and it didn't take very long to do this obviously when it comes to knitting it takes a lot longer to knit up this amount of fabric um, as opposed to crocheting so this is coming along so quickly I've done maybe three evenings of work on this and I've done all of that and um, so I'm really impressed really pleased with myself and um, I put it down and rather than reaching for my knitting I'm coming back to the crocheting because I'm really enjoying doing this right now um, and I don't want to lose where I am and surprisingly I'm enjoying working with the cotton it's smooth and easy so yeah so that's what that's looking like really pleased with it it's a mixture of treble crochets and single crochets and then yeah that's about it there's nothing I don't think there's anything too difficult about this it's quite an easy an easy um, pattern it's quite memorable if you sit and do it in one go I mean I have I do the only thing that I have the biggest problem I have is that because I'm working flat and not in the round I have to remember not to forget to stitch into the stitch at the end um, I tend to kind of lose stitches by not not um, crocheting into the last stitch at the end end so when I get to the end of the the row I count how many stitches I've got and I've usually got one less because I've managed to somehow drop one at some point and um, that's why I've started putting the markers here if you've got any tips for how to remember where to put your last stitch then please please do share because um, I could do with some help on that because I've tried the markers but sometimes I just feel like I've put the markers in the wrong place or it doesn't quite look even um, and yeah I get a bit confused at times with when I've counted the number of stitches and I know I've got the right amount but it just doesn't look even at the edge I mean it's obvious here when I look at this side I managed to lose a stitch at one point and then when I counted them I realized that I actually had lost it I could see when I looked at it that I've lost a stitch somehow and I've put an you know put added an extra one this side you can probably see here as well that I've lost a stitch um, so I've kind of added the stitch on but it was all right to start with I don't know I don't know what it is that makes me forget where where I'm supposed to stitch but somehow I do I, I have the right number of stitches now and I started to use the stitch markers now to make sure I um, crochet into the right holes but 
yeah I do tend to lose a stitch and wind up with one one less than I should have so um, it's, be, it's a bit of a challenge trying to do that but yeah I can see I am I've got three pattern repeats so um, it won't be long before I'm ready to do like shaping for the armholes so yay I'm excited about that um, yeah so I'll have to make two of those to make front and back so yeah so those are my works in progress um, I don't know if I should do the competition results or my incoming yarn Shall I do the competition results? Let's choose some winners. Um, I'm going to call my daughter and I will be right back and we can choose the winners for the Ready, Set, Go make along. Okay, so the way that we're going to choose the winners is I have already selected, using random.org, winners from the finished objects thread and from the whips thread and um, I've written their names down on pieces of paper. I'm going to put these pieces of paper in my LNS Crafts bag and we are going to select the name that corresponds with the prize. So, from the FO thread the winners were Noelle from Knits and Pieces and she was number 109. Her, her winning entry was number 109 from the FO thread. Then there was Brittany. Brittany, that's B Wing. She was her entry was number 52 from the FO thread. That one. And the last one from the FO thread that won a prize was Renna. And that was entry number 42. So that's all going in the bag. From the whip thread, we had Sue. And her entry was number 67, and that's Sue Family Diva. So she will also win a prize. And also from the whip thread, we had Jodie. That's Jodie Dyer, and her entry was number 114 from the whip thread. So they are all going in the bag. Hold on to that for a second. Then I have the prizes. All of the prizes are listed here on a piece of paper. I'm going to number them one, two, three, four, and five. Okay? So the Woolly Mama Yarns prize is going to be number one. The Pixie Yarn prize is going to be number two. The Lady Fernico Yarn prize is going to be number three. The Project Bag um, by Knitting Teaspoon is going to be number four. And then the Odd Bits the um, stitch markers and such is going to be number five so we're going to do a random.org and the person whose name comes out first is going to win let's see is this the right way to do it mm. oh, how do we do this hold on a second random.org so I'm going to choose a number using random.org, 1 to 5, and the name that she picks out will win that prize. Okay, hopefully that's explanatory. So the first one is number 4, and that is the project bag. So pick out a name from there. Who's going to win the project bag? Brittany. So Brittany is the winner of the Knitting Teaspoon Project Bag. Well done, Brittany. You get to choose, because I can't choose, which one of these you want. The Japanese style one, the Japanese knot one, or the drawstring bag. By Both donated by the lovely Knitting Teaspoon, and that's Lisbeth. Thank you, Lisbeth, for those. So Brittany, let me know which one you want, either the Japanese not style bag or the drawstring bag either one of those is yours well done thank you for your entry next one is number three who's number three go on then choose it number three is the lady fernico yarn renna 
Renna, you win a um, one skein of Lady Fernico Creations yarn up to the value of 27 US dollars, I think it was, from her shop. So do um, have a look up at Lady Fernico Yarns' shop and see which yarn you would like. I will let Lady Fernico know that you have been the winner of that prize and um, she will get that to you. Well done, Renna. So she's, that's Renna, the Lady Fernico yarn prize. Next one, number two, that is the Pixie yarn prize. Go on then. That should be. The Pixie yarn prize is this one, the Rainbow Sock Set. Who have we got? Noelle. Show it up, show it on the screen. So Noelle from Knits and Pieces, this is your prize, the yarn prize, donated by the lovely Pixie Yarns, the rainbow sock set. So let me have your address and I will get that to you. You can um, send your addresses to me via Ravelry. So that's Noelle. Yay! Next number is number three. We've already done number three. Choose another one, oh. Brandon. Mm -hmm. Number two. We've already done two. Come on. <laughs> done four it's not doing it right five okay number five is the needle blockers the stitch markers hold on and I think one of these goes in there as well and the I think that one I think the needle minder goes with that prize I've already picked it up. Go on then. Who is it? Who's number five? Jodie. Jodie, you win these bits and pieces. So let me have, that's Jodie, Jodie Dyer. Let me have your details for mailing these goodies to you also. Well done. Thank you for your entry. And the last one then is the Woolly Mummy Yarns. And that is, who won the Woolly Mummy Yarns one? I think it's Sue. Sue, Family Diva. Here you go. This is your prize, Sue. So you win the Woolly Mummy Yarn, the High Ho Silver skein of yarn. So let me have a mailing address for you also, and I will get that shipped out to you. So well done, everyone. Thank you so much for your entries. Um, I hope you have enjoyed participating that's to everybody else who didn't win a prize you may not have won a prize this time but if you keep up with the Ravelry group and the threads you may find that there's something that you like to join in there and you may win a prize for something over there so do keep posting your entries sharing your lovely knits and, and makes and um, yeah who knows who knows what will happen I may even surprise you so yeah thank you for your help you're welcome. <laughs> and now I guess it's time to go into my incoming yarn. I've got a lot of yarn that I've been buying, so you don't really want to stick around for that, I don't think. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just a reminder to the winners, please do um, contact me via Ravelry. Let me have your address so I can mail these things out to you. Brittany, let me know which of the project bags you would like and I will get that to you as well. So, I'm going to take a little break and then we'll move into incoming. Okay, so although I just said that I was going to go into incoming, I realised that I have, again, as usual, forgotten to share with you my cross stitch project. So, if you remember, my cross stitch project is being housed in my, I think it's Tudor Rose, the Tudor Rose Craft Studio um, canvas bag project bag I've got a couple of pin badges on this my little drops of wonderful and my craft house magic pin badge on this because it's a really sturdy bag I really like this um anyway so I've been working on the bee bunny um rabbits pattern is it I don't know butterflies even <laughs> bee bunny butterflies pattern and I've done a bit of this but not a whole heap Last time round, I'd done a little bit of a section kind of around here and I had bits and pieces. So I had like little bits and pieces of of filled in bits. So 
um, Tina from Simply and Stitches suggested that I, so that I don't miss out, miss stitches, I kind of make sure that my stitches are next to each other when I'm completing um, patches of colour. So I kind of took her advice and I decided to just fill in the bits that I had already kind of left a bit patchy. So I'm not sure if you'll be able to tell here where I am. I've done part of the ear. Um, let me see if I can hold this up any better. Is that any better? Okay, so I had done a, a bit here, but I had lots of little patches, so I filled it in completely and made sure I finished that section, which is this section here, I guess. And I've just made sure that I've completed sections close to each other before I spread out. And if I'm spreading out a bit, then I'm just doing it all close. So I'm not doing one colour and then, then moving to where there's another bit of that colour over here, for example, and leaving big gaps in the middle. So I'm going to try, I'm trying to take Tina's advice and make sure that I work the colours kind of close together so I don't end up putting stitches in the wrong place. But that's where I am. I feel like I want to put the eye in so it kind of comes to life a bit and then start maybe working on the ears or something. But like I said, I tend to, as I said before, I tend to um, cut, shut myself away when I'm working on my cross stitch and um, it feels a bit antisocial when I do that so I haven't really picked it up very much this last month but I have done that section and I do want to complete something so I will be going back to this at some point I would like actually like to do a butterfly but they, they seem to be spaced quite far apart and I'm not sure that I'm going to be really good at counting <laughs> the gaps between them to be able to do that so I think I should probably just stick to, to working on the bunny and see how I get on with that but that's where I am with my butterfly cross stitch project. I do enjoy doing it once I sit down and start working on it I can work on it for I think I did that little section here I think took me about two hours just this section here it took me about two hours um, just because I'm really that slow <laughs> but yeah it's 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 a it's a work in progress it is time consuming but i do enjoy doing it and i kind of get immersed in it and then just kind of everything else um that's going on around me just kind of blurs out it's really weird um but yeah that one is a work in progress it's going to take me a while to do that i think because i have to be in the right frame of mind to do that anyway on to incoming So, after doing that uh, baby elephant, the Amigurumi baby elephant, I decided I want to do another one in pink. I actually won a giveaway on Instagram um, that the Old Soul Crochet was running and I won six of her patterns. Yes, six. I was like, oh my gosh. I didn't even realise that I had... Um, entered that I was going to you know that the that the prize was six of them I thought it was just one but it was all six patterns so I've got a whole load of different animals to choose from and so I figured let me go and buy some more yarn so I can work another one of those um elephants or maybe do um she's got a, a chubby bunny one that's come up but also she's got there's the elephant there's the teddy bear one there's a is there a rabbit there's, there's, a, there's like a load of different ones. I've, I've got the patterns somewhere. I don't know what I've done with them. I'm not sure I've actually printed them off. But yeah, so I bought, bought some yarn to do another Amigurumi project. And I bought the Burnap baby blanket in the pink this time. Um, for a baby girl. And I know some people don't like to um, do gender stereotypical kind of toys. But I like to do the pink for the girl and the blue for the boy. Or even, you know, if I had different, if they had more of like a peach or a green, then I would have got those. But on the, the stall that I went to, it was a market stall, she didn't have um, a sufficient number of any particular colour other than the pinks and the blues. And so I ended up buying the pink. So I got pink um, baby burnout blanket yarn, which is a baby pink, I think it's called. So I got two of these and I bought some felt instead of the fleece that I used for the last elephant I thought 
she was selling felt and I thought that would probably do just as good a job so I picked up two sheets of pink felt as well to do like the ears and the feet so we'll see how I get on with that if you guys have got any experience of using felt for amigurumi toys and how successful or not they were feel free to share that in the description in the um, comments box below so that's one lot of yarn um, I went to B&M and as always when I go into B&M I have a look around the wool section, yarn section and I ended up finding some more yarn that I like um, as I mentioned before B&M is like a budget store where they do food, toys, furniture, all kinds of different stuff I always head for the yarn section and this time round while I was in there I found this yarn and this is baby sparkle yarn it's a 100 gram skein of yarn hopefully you can see that and it's like a it's a lilac color and um, I figured I could make a baby cardigan or something out of this um, it's really soft is it I don't even know what what is it is it acrylic I think it's acrylic 95% acrylic and 5% metallic yarn so I've got 100 grams of yarn in here which is it doesn't tell you oh 300 meters each skein and that was only 199 for one ball so that to me is a bargain and um hopefully i i can get something knit up in this soon they should be the same dye lot although no they're different dye lots why did i pick up two different dye lots uh i don't know why i did that i've got two different dye lots people look at that Oh no, never mind, I will be able to do something with them. I just noticed that one looks a bit more purpley than the other. Usually I check the dye lots before I come out of the shop and for some reason I clearly have not done that with these. So it is what it is. I will, I will be able to make something out of it but obviously it's not going to be like perfectly matched. So I don't know, we'll see, we'll see how we get on. 300 metres for each, uh, I'll be able to make something or I can just give it away to someone. But I also found, and um, bearing in mind I'm thinking about making lots of tops at the moment, some are kind of lightweight, um, warmer weather wear tops, I came across this yarn, it feels quite heavy, this is another kind of sparkly yarn, I'm not sure the camera's picking it up, this is called Glamorous Yarn, Sparkle Glamorous Yarn with a hint of shimmer, it says, it's a 150 gram skein of knitting yarn, and it's like it's already knitted, it's 56 sorry 86 percent acrylic and 14 percent metallic yarn let me see if i can show you what that actually looks like if you can see if i block there you go you can see that the skein is kind of made up of already like um chained yarn so it's not like just ordinary plied it's kind of chain like and i thought that would be really pretty in the top and i thought four skeins of this yarn hopefully I've matched the dye lots for this one that one does that one does and yeah I've matched the dye lots for these but not for the other one so they're all cream and I'm not sure how many I'm not sure what I was going to make with it because I didn't have a particular pattern in mind but I will make something I could possibly even um, make this out of it because that would probably look nice in that kind of yarn but we'll see I want to see how I get on with this this one first before I make any another one out of it but yeah so I've got four skeins of that so these are the commercial yarns then I've got um, as I mentioned earlier I picked up some drops muscat mercerized cotton which I'm using for the, the crochet top but I also thought I would pick up some in a different colour and I thought I would go outside of my comfort zone and pick a colour that I wouldn't ordinarily wear and I felt that red was an interesting colour for me it's something that I don't usually tend to wear when I'm here but maybe when I'm away on holiday in warmer climates I tend to wear lots of different colours but when I'm at home I don't wear lots of colours but I do like wearing red when I'm abroad and especially against white so I picked up this colour it's like a it's number 41 I think it's wine or something like that I can't remember the exact colour name but I'll um, try and put the information somewhere so you can see that and I've got about how many skeins I think I've got about 10 skeins of 10 balls of this 
um, drops and muscat mercerized cotton in a kind of a deep red color and I thought that looks really nice and that will probably suit me in a nice cottony top so I bought these I have a pattern in mind a knitted pattern rather than a crocheted pattern but who knows I could well change my mind at some point but I don't know I haven't started I'm not going to start anything with this until I've finished something up I think I want to actually finish something up so I've got this great big bag full of different cottons that I want to be using for this summer's summer wear um, then I bought a skein of yarn from Pixie Yarns I bought this rainbow sock set which one of which um, I was given a set to give away in my giveaway and I also bought one for myself because I thought that might that would look really nice as socks I saw on her on um, Sophie's Etsy page this yarn and I saw it knit up and I liked the skein I liked that um, when it was knit up so I thought I'd buy that for myself and this is a 50 gram with a 20 gram mini and it's 75% merino and 25% nylon not sure that I will use the mini with this color anyway but I have the mini and we shall see but I've, I like I like this one this is what I was going for the main sock color because I thought that looked really nice knit up and that looked really cool as a sock so I've got that um, I was given some yarn and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this yet I was given some yarn by the lovely Emma from Em's Crafts and Chats and she sent me some sheepies yarn I've never heard well I've heard of the brand before but I've never used any of their yarn and this is river washed yarn and um, we've got the colour Namada and Ural or Ural but those are the two skeins. One's, they're both 50 gram skeins of yarn. And the thing is, they are 78% cotton and 22% acrylic. So I was wondering, would I be able to do dishcloths? Could I use these as dishcloths, considering they've got acrylic in them? Are they good to be used for dishcloths? Let me know if you guys have used these and what you've used them for. Because um, then that will kind of help me to make a decision as to whether or not to keep them or to gift them, for, gift them on. She also sent me an opal yarn, um, which is the colourway. What is it? De Doppel. Uh, this is double agent, basically. Translated as double agent, but in German, I think it's De Doppel agent, something like that. I'm not sure. But I looked it up and it's double agent. Not the kind of colour I would go for, generally, and that's what it looks like knit up. But it's an opal yarn and so I thought I might give it a go not sure but that was gifted to me and I'm grateful that she thought of me so thank you very much Emma so those were yarns that were gifted to me then I move on to hand dyed yarns so when I went to Ravelry I didn't get to pick up um, a skein of yarn from Third Vault Yarns I had a look I think I had a look around her stall and then I didn't really see anything that caught my eye there was so much there it was really overwhelming um, then somebody mentioned her shop again in a podcast and I thought I would take a look and I came across this yarn which is called blast ended shroot this was on her website. It's it's called a companion four ply, which is a hundred percent superwash merino fingering weight yarn, and I liked this colourway, so I thought I would pick this up and see how this works out. So that's what it looks like. It's a grey with like a rust colour. The camera's making it look a bit more pinky, but it is more of a kind of a rust colour. That's probably that's a more accurate depiction. It's a rust kind of colour with a grey, a tonal grey. So I'm not sure if I'm going to make socks with this or if I'm going to use it to add to something else. I'm not sure. I just wanted to have a skein of her yarn to give it a try and see what I felt. So that's one. Then Biff Sugar Yarns was having a sale. And so I picked up some two skeins of uh, Superwash Merino Cashmere Nylon Fingering Weight Yarn. And the colourway is Paper Roses. I absolutely love the way these look. And so I picked two up. I should have, in hindsight, picked up maybe three or four so I could make a top or something. But I picked up two 
because um, that's what I could afford at the time and I'm really pleased with how they look and I do have other pinks in my collection or creams and pinks so um, this would either go well nicely with those or I could find another use for these but I just wanted them they were on sale I like the colorway they are merino cashmere nylon and I thought yes I'm gonna have those so I've got these two as well so those I think that's it that's all my incoming yarn what else did I buy as I said before I bought this crochet hook which is an Addy crochet hook from wool warehouse um, uh, I tend to like the normal metal ones but because this is just a normal cylindrical shape I actually like the feel of this and I've enjoyed working it it's very easy for me to use and I'm comfortable with it so I may pick up some more of these um, what else I got some labels from Etsy so I ran out of um, labels to stick on my knits and I picked these up from what's the name of the shop JS I can't remember now I'll have to find the leaflet and and put it the information on the screen somewhere um, but I got these labels if you can see this to sew onto my knitted items um, they're not to me they're not as pretty as the other ones that I have um, I can't I don't have an example to show you now they're not quite the same as the other ones they're still nice and they they definitely smell very leathery and they will look good on my knitted hats and stuff they're quite small they're small and kind of neat I guess so considering my name is quite long to spell if my, if I had a shorter name I'd probably have a smaller label but never mind um, but yeah that's those are the labels I picked up from Etsy I'll leave um, details below so you can go and check out that company can't remember what they're called but yeah I've got 25 of those um, other than that I think that's all I've been buying in terms of crafting and my plan for this month is to just um, continue working on my whips I think I need to finish some stuff off in the next month I'd like to finish the cotton top because that should be a quick one and um, maybe the socks the socks the socks are usually a quick knit for me so those should finish up and then I'll probably move on to another top because I want to have a little collection of tops that I can wear when it gets warmer hopefully if it does get warmer so yeah that is it those are my incoming yarns that's it I've done the giveaway um, I have another not a giveaway I have another um, what's the word make along in my Ravelry thread which is for summer wear because I like to see what you guys are making to wear for summer if you are making anything just so I can get some ideas and maybe I might like some and might like to try them myself if you have any recommendations for crocheted garments that you think as a beginner I might be interested in then um, by all means share those in the comments below or over on the Ravelry group because I'd like to improve on my crochet skills and see what I can make what I'm capable of because um, at the moment I feel like my knitting is taking priority because I'm learning a lot with that and the crochet is a little more out of my comfort zone but I do want to push myself this year and that's why I'm trying to make a garment with the crocheting um, so yeah any help um, or pattern suggestions would be gratefully received um, other than that I think the video is long enough I think I'm going to leave it there as I said before in relation to the make along the ready set go make along please do let me have your details so I can mail your items out to you um, that you can share that with me on via Ravelry okay but yeah that is it I'm going to leave it there thank you so much for watching I hope you've found something here that you have um, liked um, please do feel free to join in the conversation in the comment section or over on Ravelry if you have any suggestions for make-alongs that you might like to see in the future then feel free to share those but for now thank you so so much for joining me and I do hope you will come back next time I tend to try and record um, a video every month so that um, I can kind of 
have time for myself to watch other podcasts as well as getting some knitting done getting some things finished getting some things started and also spending time with my family um, because as we all know YouTube is not the only thing that I do <laughs> I am a mum I have a husband I have children and I have a job so life goes on outside of YouTube so yeah do bear with me um, I am over on Instagram so you can find me over there I do try and post pictures over there but I'm I guess I'm more active on Ravelry so if you have any questions or queries or anything like that then hit me up on Ravelry and I will be sure to answer them but that is it I'm going to leave it there because I've been rambling on for far too long already um, thank you so much for joining me I do hope you guys will have a lovely Easter if you celebrate it and I will see you in about a month's time um, do subscribe if you haven't already and click on the notifications button because that will let you know when I upload a video sometimes I don't upload bang on a month a month's time so when I do upload that will if you click on the notifications button that will tell you <coughs> excuse me that will tell you when I've uploaded a video so you don't have to keep checking back okay because you guys are busy too so yeah that is it. I'm definitely going to leave it there. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Bye.